Hey guys, Apprentice Alex here, and today I'm going to talk about why you don't ever really see true historical reproductions. Um, you see a lot of stuff inspired by history, but they're very rarely true reproductions of historical pieces, and some are using period techniques, but a lot of them are still created through a modern lens because that's the society that we live in. Let's start with this. It is a Chicago Cutler kitchen knife, relatively cheap one. And if you look, the fitment on this kitchen knife, especially dirt cheap one, is very good. There's a little overlapping on the rubber of this hilting here, but it's maybe a millimeter. The evenness of the bolster, again, extremely precise. This is what we're used to looking at as something cheap. Now let's take a look at my flamberge over here. You hold it on, you can see that the pommel is canted off center. This is Oh, uh, this was bit forged using almost exclusively period technique, if modern tools and materials. Um, even the fact that I used a power hammer, there's evidence of treadle hammers being used as far back as uh, the 12th century in Western Europe. But even beyond that, striking teams were a thing. It was not a lone smith who was forging out sword blades into the wee hours of the morning every night. Uh, they had teams of apprentices and thralls that were uh, helping them out with that. Um, and one of the techniques that I used, specifically with this pommel, is what's called a hot punch. Heating up to, uh, heating the pommel up, punching a dummy of the tang into it. And it's using the mild steel dummy tang, which is what they'd use in period. It's very difficult to maintain a central line and so you end up with that cocked pommel. Now let's look at some historical examples from the Wallace collection. If we look at the one over here we can see that the pommel is almost cocked forward. Um, again very very difficult to create that um, that perfect fit up using these period tools and techniques. On the other one here, we have a cocked pommel very similar to the one on my blade. Now, the question that people are probably ask, well, maybe they just didn't add different aesthetics, or maybe these were mistakes. Once is a mistake, twice is a pattern. And if you look through the Wallace collection, I strongly suggest Google the Wallace collection and uh, check out their galleries. There's some stunning stuff on there. Um, they have an amazing collection of stuff that's been photographed for your consumption online. Um, anyway, the uh, almost every pommeled piece, other than a few dress pieces, and even more often than not, the dress pieces still had these quote-unquote flaws. Uh, they all have these these inconsistencies but there is a through line to them that if you look at the it's extremely difficult with just hand tools and with just these period techniques to create perfect symmetry the human eye notices patterns they know that this was not symmetrical or perfect looking but if you look at all the way all of them are adjusted they're adjusted in such a way that gives them a practical purpose even my piece here if you look if i hold this out, it's perfect wrist alignment with that camp to the pommel for wielding this hand and a half sword with two hands. If I, if I adjust my wrist for where it would lie, is my wrist is canted more. Now there are advanced techniques that a perfectly aligned pommel and that cant to the wrist allows, it's easier to pull off. However, if you're looking at more munitions grade battlefield equipment, they all are like this. It's really, you only see any kind of perfect fit up on the highest end of, of uh, 
dueling equipment. And again, even that very rare. Uh, also, a lot of the ones that look perfect are the ones that had uh, hilting replaced later on, usually uh, Victorian era, um, when things had when uh, manufacturing technology had come along a little further. But the point being that this looks off to the modern eye, despite being a historically accurate fitment of a pommel. This is why you don't see many true historical reproductions. You see an idealized reproduction of a historical piece through that modern eye that ex es ah, that expects that mechanical precision on something like a knife or a sword. Again, I come back to this is a cheap, I think it was bought at Walmart, kitchen knife. And it has far better visual symmetry than the sword that I spent a hundred hours for working in with period technique on. It's a very, uh, it's a, kind of a tough pill to swallow because the history buff in me really does want to create more truly historically accurate pieces. Um, but also the, the, uh, the salesman in me realizes that this is going to be a really hard sell to anybody but the most avid history buff. And when it comes to the, to the end of the day, um, then you've kind of got to, you, you got to find that, that happy medium, which usually again is an idealized version of a historical piece made through the modern eye. Anyway, that's my thoughts of the day. I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, there's a link tree down in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow our other socials. Uh, if you feel generous, donate a little on Patreon. We so wholeheartedly appreciate it. And feel free to reach out if any of the products you see in any of my videos interest you. There's a good chance they're still on sale even if they haven't hit our website yet. Thanks again for watching.